Welcome to Crime and Sacrifice. I'm your host, Brianna, and this is episode 15, Hideki Akaiwa. In 2011, the most powerful earthquake ever recorded in the region took place off the coast of Japan, registering at a magnitude of 9.1 on the Richter scale. This caused a series of sudden and catastrophic tsunami waves to strike nearby coastal areas only minutes later. With such little warning, many people lost their lives as the tsunamis swept over coastal areas with waves dozens of feet high, possibly over 100 feet in places, many people dying through drowning or blunt force trauma, buffeted by the incredible and powerful waves. But the disaster didn't end with the tsunamis. It also resulted in massive flooding in some coastal towns and nuclear meltdown for reactors located in affected areas. The immediate aftermath was excruciating for many survivors as they waited to hear word from missing family members, many forced to flee from their communities and homes, and some regions left completely underwater. Many were afraid that another earthquake or aftershock could devastate the area further while rescue operations were still underway. But some survivors couldn't fathom just waiting around for family members to be rescued. This story is about one of those survivors, a man named Hideki Akaiwa. In 2011, Hideki was 43 years old and living with his wife in the coastal city of Ishinomaki, located in the Miyagi Prefecture of Japan. The city was founded in the 4th century as a major rice-shipping port for the region, and today is known for its popular fish market and its annual scallop festival. Hideki and his wife had met 20 years before, while they were both out surfing in a local bay. They had been together ever since, both preferring a life by the sea. Hideki's mother also lived in the area. On March 11th, just minutes after the initial earthquake, Ishinomaki was one of the cities struck by tsunami waves that resulted in some of the worst devastation of the disaster. Hideki himself was safely inland at work when it happened. When he heard the news and the initial reports of the extent of the damage, his thoughts went immediately to his family, to his wife who was still at home, and to his mother who had been out that day. Hideki did not hesitate, and he rushed home to try to find them, fearful and unable to get a hold of either. As he arrived near the area, Hideki was shocked to discover that huge swaths of the city were completely submerged in up to ten feet of water. This included the area where he and his wife lived, where he was trying to get to. Given how much devastation he could see and how long it would likely take for rescue operations to get underway, Hideki made the decision to try to find his wife on his own. It's unclear from interviews where he got his hands on a scuba suit, but somehow he found one, putting it on as he braved the floodwaters to get back home, determined to find his wife at any cost. He had to swim through murky waters made especially dangerous by heavy pieces of debris floating throughout that could easily kill or disable him. As Hideki described to the Los Angeles Times, the water felt very cold, dark, and scary. I had to swim about 200 yards to her, which was quite difficult with all the floating wreckage. Finally, he arrived at his home and found his wife, still alive and virtually unharmed. He carefully swam with her back through the debris, getting her to safety. Hideki's thoughts soon turned to his mother as other rescue teams arrived. He hadn't heard from her at all, and he could not reach her. When a couple of days passed without any word or much progress by the rescue teams, Hideki made the decision to go back out to try to find her on his own, as he had done with his wife, knowing how critical time was during a crisis like this. The big challenge regarding his mother, of course, was that she hadn't been home at the time of the incident. Still, Hideki knew roughly what neighborhood she had been in and decided to wade into the waters to look for her, walking up to his neck in water as he followed his intuition and eventually began going door to door for any sign of her. Miraculously, he was able to find her taking refuge on the second floor of a flooded and abandoned home. As Hideki said in later interviews, she was very much panicked because she was trapped with all this water around. I didn't know where she was. It was such a relief to find her. 
Hideki had succeeded in rescuing the two most important people in his life, a testament to his love for them. However, Hideki would not allow himself to stop there. He had seen the devastation firsthand, knew how much help people still needed, and realized he could help them to safety with the aid of his scuba gear. His family's safety now assured, Hideki joined the search and rescue effort and began to help find survivors, guiding others to safety in the days that followed. In the end, the Tohoku earthquake and tsunami claimed around 22,000 lives, displacing over 300,000 others and causing billions of dollars in property damage, plus terrifying meltdowns at nearby nuclear reactors. Like the Indian Ocean incident, Many across the world rallied to help survivors, some on the ground helping as Hideki had done, and many others donating aid and other kinds of support. Tragedies like this often prove that the most difficult times can bring out the best in us, especially with those that have the determination and courage of people like Hideki Akaiwa. That's it for this week. Thank you so much for listening to Crime and Sacrifice. What kind of person will you choose to be?